Hey guys, Joe here with you. I got another lesson uh, that was requested through a YouTube video, a prior YouTube video. And the question basically is, is with the pneumothorax, will your static compliance change? Will your dynamic compliance change? Or will they both change? Okay. Now I think um, I've done a video over this before, but I'm going to try to do this one just slightly different. Okay. And so what we're going to talk about today is dynamic compliance versus static compliance. Now what we got to do first of all is understand what compliance is. Okay. And when we talk about compliance, we're talking about when you give a set amount of volume, what is the changing pressure? Okay. So giving a set volume, what is the pressure change in the lungs? Okay. And and that's that's what you need to know first of all is when you're talking about compliance you have to be in a mode of mechanical ventilation where set tidal volumes are being administered okay you can't calculate your static compliance when you're in pressure control because pressure control doesn't allow for a true plateau pressure to be evaluated okay and so that's the first thing you need to understand. If you're in assist control volume control or SIMV volume control, then you're definitely going to be able to calculate your dynamic and your static compliances. If you're in pressure control, you can't calculate these because you're not giving a set tidal volume. You're giving a set pressure that will result in a volume, okay? And that volume is going to vary. And that's the definition of elastance, not compliance, okay? So we don't really talk about elastance much when you get out into uh, the real world. Even your MBRC exam uh, doesn't really talk about elastance much. It's really all about recognizing compliance. So here's the breakdown of dynamic versus static compliance. Now to do this, we first need to understand what the terms dynamic and static mean because they tell us what's happening and what pressure are we monitoring throughout the breath, okay? And so, so what I'm gonna do here is just <clears throat> draw a line right here, okay? So everything dynamic will be on this side, everything static will be on this side, okay? And so let's talk about dynamic fully. And then we'll go back and talk about static fully, and then we'll compare them to disease processes, okay? So when you talk about dynamic, the word dynamic means moving or changing. So this is the change in pressure per the set given tidal volume while the air is moving through airways, the endotracheal tube, the um, anatomical airways and all the way down to the alveoli. What's happening while the air is moving? And this results in our peak airway pressure, okay? So dynamic is, um, I'm just gonna put moving up here, okay? Y'all understand that that means while the air is moving through the airways. And I'm gonna say moving through airways and alveoli. Okay, so that's what we will get from dynamic compliance is what is the change in pressure while that gas is moving through the airways and the alveoli. So <clears throat> we will use this. This will be our peak inspiratory pressure. Okay, so this is our PIP. Okay, you with me? Because PIP is the result of the breath given and it results in a peak inspiratory pressure that encompasses everything, the airways and the alveoli compliance, okay? So PIP is important. Now the next thing you wanna know is the formula. So I told you it's the given tidal volume divided by the change in pressure. Now if you're talking about PIP, which is what we are, then it's PIP minus PEEP. Now this is important because you have to understand that the change in pressure is from baseline to peak inspiratory pressure. Your baseline is not always zero. As a matter of fact, it's probably rarely zero. Okay. Your baseline where you're starting from is 5, 8, 10, 12, 15, whatever your PEEP is set at, right? So you can't just say, oh, my PIP is 30 
And so I'm going to divide tidal volume by 30 when you didn't start at zero. If you're on a peep of 10 and your pip is 30, then the change in pressure was 20 because you started at 10 and you went up to 30. Okay? So understanding that it's, it's pip minus peep, that's going to give you your change in pressure. You divide that into your given tidal volume, and that will tell you what your dynamic compliance is. Okay, now normal dynamic compliance, depending on what resource you look at, is anywhere from 60 to 90, 60 to 100 mLs per centimeters of water pressure. Okay, so I'm going to put that up here now too. Okay, I'm just going to go with 60 to 90. That varies, like I said, so don't freak out if you learn 60 to 100. Okay, and what that says is, is for every centimeter of water pressure that's given, there's this much volume given. Okay? For every centimeter change in pressure, we're giving X amount of volume. Okay? And that's what dynamic is. That's the, that's the formula you need to know to calculate it. That is the normal values that you need to know. Now I'm going to go back and draw a square around something that's very important that for you students who are learning dynamic compliance and static compliance. I'm going to draw a square around something because I like to learn based off of word recognition. Okay, And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to draw a square around airways and alveoli. Okay, This is very, very important. Okay, Now I'm going to stop right here with dynamic and I'm gonna switch over to static compliance, okay? Static, the word static means um, stagnant or not moving, okay? So how do we deliver a tidal volume and then see what the pressure is when the air is not moving, right? How do we do that? We have to perform an inspiratory hold, and what an inspiratory hold does is that it pauses at the end of the breath going in, the full tidal volume is delivered, and then you hold the breath, right? Okay, now many mechanical ventilators, you can press the inspiratory pause or the inspiratory hold during the breath. It won't initiate until after the tidal volume has been, then been delivered, but then it will hold the breath for you. And what that is gonna give you is not the peak inspiratory pressure, but that will tell you the plateau pressure. Okay, what the plateau pressure tells you is the change in pressure for that set tidal volume that results at the alveolar level only. Okay, key difference here. So static is still not moving, not changing, stagnant. Okay, and what it tells us about is the alveoli only, okay? You may hear this referred to as the parenchymal only, okay? And that's fine, however you want to see it. So instead of writing pip here, over here I'm going to write plateau. And I'm just going to shorten it for plat, okay? We're talking about our plateau pressure, okay? So this brings us to what is the formula for static compliance, and that is tidal volume over plateau pressure minus peep. Again, if you don't start at zero, okay, you start at a peep level, then the change from baseline to your plateau pressure was the pressure change for that breath, that set given tidal volume, okay, and that's plateau pressure. Now, I did a video not too long ago talking about driving pressure, and we know that driving pressure is plateau pressure minus peep. So, you could also say here that this is, I'm just going to put DP up here, for driving pressure. So tidal volume over driving pressure. Plateau minus PEEP. However you taught it, I mean however you learned it, however it was taught to you, I don't care how that works for you. But if, if you remember driving pressure and you, you really understand driving pressure, then think about it that way. If you just think plateau minus PEEP, then think about it that way. It doesn't really matter. Okay, As long as you understand that when you're calculating static compliance, you're calculating the pressure change in the alveoli units only, which is only established by performing an inspiratory hold and gathering a plateau pressure. Okay? Now, <clears throat> normal 
30 to 60 mLs per centimeter of water pressure change. Okay, now there's some new data out there that's saying that it's 0.1 to 0.4 mLs per centimeters of water pressure. But if you think about it, if you're giving a tidal volume of 400, um, if you divide that by 0.1, you'll get 40. Okay, and that would fall in this range. Okay, so 30 to 60 for static, 60 to 90 for dynamic. Now, if you understand those concepts, then the next question is, well, how does this tie into disease processes? Okay, and so what you have to realize is that a lot of places have actually gotten away from documenting dynamic compliance. They only document static compliance, okay, and then they document airway resistance. Because everybody, I'm not going to say everybody, <clears throat> but, but, but seasoned respiratory therapists and people who understand this concept understand that if your, sta if your static compliance decreases, okay, that means you have a worsening of compliance at the alveolar level. Now, if the alveolar level is worse for a static compliance, then obviously it's going to be worse for the dynamic compliance. So static compliance will always affect dynamic compliance. Okay? And the reason this is, is because your plateau pressure is always less than your peak inspiratory pressure. Always. Can't be any other way. Okay? Air can't move through all these airways and then settle somewhere and the pressure where it settles be higher than the pressure it was moving through all the airways. So, so, so plateau is always less than PIP, always, okay? So static compliance, because it's talking about the alveoli only, will always affect dynamic compliance because dynamic compliance also includes the alveolar compliance, okay? Now where this gets tricky is, is that you can have a decreased dynamic compliance because dynamic takes into account the airways where static does not okay and so you can actually have a decreased dynamic compliance with a normal static compliance now what disease process do you really think about when this comes into play like what disease process Primarily, think of just the number one primary disease that affects airways primarily without really affecting alveoli. And if you're thinking about that, okay, you should come up with asthma. Okay, asthma is a lung, a cardiopulmonary disease that is primarily restricted to um, airway resistance. Okay, you have the smooth muscle constriction, the airways get really small, and but there's really not much happening at the alveolar level. Asthma doesn't immediately affect the alveolar level. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, well, asthma can lead to mucus plugging, which can lead to atelectasis. You're right, okay? True story, not going to argue with you. But primarily, asthma is an airway resistance problem, which is going to put the greater emphasis on the dynamic compliance and the airway resistance rather than a decrease in your static compliance. So somebody comes in with a status asthmaticus, you put them on a ventilator because everything supports putting them on a mechanical ventilator and you do um, your compliances. Don't be shocked if you find a decreased dynamic compliance with a normal static compliance, okay? Because asthma in from an airway perspective does not immediately affect the functioning alveolar units okay does that make sense we're talking airway resistance here which is why some places have gotten away from calculating dynamic and they just calculate static and then they calculate airway resistance because if you know you have a normal static compliance but you have an increased airway resistance then you know it's an airway problem and you're not real concerned about the alveolar level you got to fix the airway problem okay now, when we talk about something like pneumonia, okay, that's where it, that leads to alveolar consolidation. Now, tell me you understand that alveolar consolidation 
will decrease the functionality of the alveolar units and it will overall decrease the compliance of the alveoli. Now, when we think about that, we realize that, okay, pneumonia will decrease the compliance at the alveolar level, which is going to decrease our static compliance. But because dynamic compliance also assesses and includes alveolar compliance, then your dynamic compliance is going to decrease also. So if you were going to draw, put pneumonia over here, I'm just going to put PNA, okay? You would put it under static compliance, but you would also put it here under dynamic compliance. Now, does that mean that that pneumonia patient has an airway problem? Absolutely not, okay? It's just an alveolar problem, okay? Does that make sense? Now, the question that originated was, with the pneumothorax, will you have a decreasing static separate from a decreasing dynamic, or will they both decrease? What's your thoughts on that? Well, think about it. What's a pneumothorax? A pneumothorax is air in the pleural space that collapses and compresses the alveolar units, right? Alveolar units, which means you're talking about an alveoli problem. So obviously pneumothorax will decrease your static compliance as well as your dynamic compliance, okay? Hey, hope this helps. If it doesn't make sense, give me a comment, okay? If you've learned anything from anything on any of my videos and on my channel, you will learn that if you ask me a question, I will answer it in due time. Good luck. I hope the summer semester is going great for you. If you're already a practicing uh, respiratory care practitioner, hope you're having fun doing it and impacting lives.